Good morning from the Murrays. We got about five till, so we'll start in a few minutes. Hey, do you have a joke or riddle of the day? I actually have two. Well, one of each. All right, give them to us. <clears throat> Did you forget them? No, it's a, it's a very complicated joke. Okay, well give it to us. Knock, knock. Who's there? 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 My name's Knock, knock. Uh. That's, that was a terrible joke. <laughs> that was, sure that was pretty horrible. Knock, knock, who? That's how knock, knock jokes work. Whenever I, whenever he tells that joke to me, I'm always like, knock, knock, who? And he's like, no, that's not how you're supposed to do Alrighty. Alright, what's your other joke? You said you had two. Yes, I do. Alright. I think the other one was a riddle. Okay. I bet you I can make you say the color, I can bet you I can make you say blue. Okay. What are the colors of the American flag? Red, white, and that other color. See, I told you I could get you to say red. No, you didn't. You said the other color. <laughs> and how is it supposed to work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I messed up your joke. Mo, do you have a riddle or a joke? Okay, repeat after me. The school bus is yellow. 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 What color is the school bus? What color is the school bus? You screwed it up. Oh. It's, he's, you're supposed to say yellow. And I was like, I was gonna say repeat yellow. after me. <laughs> I said, repeat after me. You're both too clever. You're Wait, clever I, classes. I have one. <laughs> yes. Repeat it. Okay. Pete and repeat. Repeat. We're sitting on a bench. Pete fell off. He was left. Repeat. Pete and Pete, Pete and repeat. We're sitting on a bench. Pete fell off. He was left. Repeat. repeat. Pete and repeat were sitting on a bench. Pete fell off. He was left. Repeat. Pete and repeat were sitting on a bench. Pete fell off. He was left. Repeat. Pete and repeat were sitting on a bench. Pete fell off. He was left. Pete. Uh, the other guy. Pete. <laughs> Pete. You messed it up. Uh, I didn't mess it up. What are going on forever? Oh gosh, that's not. <laughs> He's a dolphin. Here. Glad to be with you all this morning at the Murray House. We're a little slap happy today. Do you want me to hold it? Okay. We're glad to be with you for morning prayer. We'll start here in about a minute or so. Um, all is well at the Murray household. Hope everything is well in your home is also. Uh, and as far as I know, everything's well with the church and with all of you. So thanks be to God for that. Um, as always, we'll uh, begin with morning prayer. If you still have your bulletin way back when, from when we mailed this at Easter, um, use that. If not, you can look in the book, the uh, Book of Common Prayer, on page 77 is where this starts. Page 77, the Book of Common Prayer. Um, our readings today are from 2 Thessalonians, and it's the first chapter of 2 Thessalonians. And the Book of Matthew, what's the other um, people are wanting to look these up? The book of Matthew, chapter 6, 25 through 34. Um, but we'll repeat those again later when we actually begin our worship. Oh, I have 9 o'clock. What time do you have? Oh, that 9 o'clock. All right. <laughs> and I have 9 o'clock. I'm not even wearing a watch. <laughs> I see that. Let's begin. Again, we'll begin with morning prayer, right two, found on page 77 in your book of common prayer. Page 77. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. On page 80, the invitatory insulter. 
Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouths, mouths shall proclaim your praise. praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. We'll say together, Christ our Passover, which is on page 83. Page 83, Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So, with, so also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has, come, has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 71. Psalm 71, which you can look up also in your Book of Common Prayer. It can be found on page 683 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 683. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me. And save me. Be my rock, my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Sake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. O oh God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh my God. Let those who set themselves against me be put to shame and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long, though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young. And to this day, I tell of your wonderful works. And now that I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me. Till I make known your strength to this generation and your power to all. Who are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, O God? You have showed me great troubles and adversities. 
but you will restore my life and bring me up again from the deep places of the earth. You strengthen me more and more. You enfold and comfort me. Therefore, I will praise you upon the lyre for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing with joy when I play to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness all day long, for they are ashamed and disgraced who sought to do me harm. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The lesson appointed for today, the first, is from 2 Thessalonians. Verses 1 through 12. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give, them thanks, to, give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly. And the love of every one of you is for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power and every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our Lord and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was wondering what you were doing over there. I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. We will join together in saying the song to the Lamb, which is on page 93 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 93 of the Book of the Common Prayer, the song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. What part? Um, it's the 6 <coughs> verses 25 through 34. Good. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. 
Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll say together the song of the redeemed found on page 94 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 94, the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God. Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I'm going to give a two-minute reflection on our Gospel reading, if that long even. Jesus is clear that we can get all anxious about what's going to happen next in our world, what's going to happen next at our church, What's going to happen next with our economy? But his advice is simple. You can't do anything but worry more. All you can ultimately do is appreciate the day we have today. To celebrate the gifts God has given us today. So today we celebrate family and health and doing well in this world. And know that somehow God cares for us, loves us, and reaches out to us everywhere we are. continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Do you want to read the suffrages? Sure. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. 
Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving held among all nations. Let not the needy of the Lord be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. A collect for this week, this sixth Sunday of Easter. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A prayer for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll say, I will uh, then say on page 100, one of the prayers for mission, or page the top of page 101, rather. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, May bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. Amen. We'll now say the prayer in the time of the coronavirus. For all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for safety and protection. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For all who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who do not have adequate health insurance, we pray that no family will face financial burdens alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who are afraid to access care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For public officials and decision makers, we pray for wisdom and guidance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort, and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll now say together the general thanksgiving, which can be found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. It's good to be with you, my friends. Hope you are doing well. Abe hopes you're doing well, but he thinks, I guess you can't see him under our legs, but we all can. Moses is touching me. Moses is uh, giving a little brotherly tap. <laughs> it's good to be with you, my friends. Hope you have a good week, and we will see you tomorrow with Ruth at 9 o'clock, and then on Sunday, uh, we will share and worship at 10 a.m. Hope to see you all soon. God bless. Oh, no, he's grabbing me.